here we have an electric engine on a 1972 MGB EV conversion. This uh, used to be a gasoline vehicle, now it's converted to electric. Much more efficient. Hopefully, this will be the future of uh, you know clean vehicles and uh, definitely sustainable energy. Um, hopefully, we can wipe off uh, gasoline engines off of the face of the planet within 10 years, and I think it's possible. Let's check out some more of this vehicle. We'll get a little interview with uh, one of the guys here with Drive Oregon. This being the trunk here with several different batteries, charging setup, and uh, even a cooling fan. Mobile Key here with JoeAnybody.com. We are at the Drive Oregon booth here with Steven Erickson, financial advisor and Nissan Leaf owner and promoter. We are going to get a little bit more information about this new high-tech electric vehicle that is a hybrid, that is a gasoline. This vehicle is the wave of the future, folks. Uh, we're going to speak with uh, Stephen here for a little while and uh, give a little report and interview with him and uh, hopefully find out some cool information about these new high-tech vehicles. Thank you. Um, and each charge, and then uh, so it total gives you a running total for month to date. Nice. So I ended up with uh, uh, $25.32. And you know what I, I should have done? What I should do is track the mileage at the beginning of the month and the end of the month to see how many miles I went in that. Yeah. Uh, on that $25.32. So you could figure like your usage hours of like exactly how much power you've used, you've yeah. used out of your. And, and actually, in here, when you get in the car, it'll show you I average about 3.7 kilowatts per mile. Not bad, yeah. not bad. Yeah, so, um, you know, really what you're looking at here is the big brick cell phone 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, in three years, you'll have a lot, a variety of, of other vehicles that are available. Uh, but Nissan is actually producing, these came out of, these two Nissans came out of Japan, but uh, they're actually going to start producing these, and they've already uh, are working on the plant in Smyrna, Tennessee, and that, um, and they're going to produce 120,000 Nissan Leafs out of there in the next two years and then ramp it up to 500,000 in the year 2014. Wow. We're going to have 700,000 Nissan Leafs on the road by 2015. So Obama said by 2015 you'll have a million electric cars on the road. Well, that's just it doesn't matter what Obama says. It's about what the manufacturer you're coming to market with and what you and I, the consumers are demanding. Yeah. Nissan just reopened their, um, their orders on, on August 5th. And in three days, they filled all their orders and shut it down. Wow. Um, and I, I don't know how many they ordered, but I know when I ordered a year ago, 20,000 people signed up in three months. What, ahead of time, huh? Ahead of time. A year in advance. Okay. So this is a whole different business model. They aren't waiting to you know, get the cars built and then hope somebody buys it. People are ordering them ahead of time. Tesla has already had over 5,000 people order their uh, S-Class. Okay. Now is that, that's another manufacturer? Like yeah, a Tesla is a U.S. manufacturer um, based out of Palo Alto. They now have the NUMI plant in Fremont, California. And uh, um, they actually have orders for 5,000. On October 1st, um, they stopped production of the, um, e the uh, Roadster and are fully committed to the S-Class. Okay. Um, and you'll actually start seeing them in malls. Um, they're, they hired a guy from the marketing department from Apple, and they've already tested it in two stores, one in, the, in California and one in uh, Colorado. And the sales went through the roof. The pre-orders went through the roof in these mall locations. Well, I bet. Um, and people not even driving them. But think about it. It's an electric car. You could drive it in the mall. There's no emissions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. No, you'd think the price would be a barrier for some people because I've heard that some people say, oh, they're so expensive when they first come out, you know. Sure. Well, so is the big brick cell phone. Yeah. But, okay, so this is a $32,000 price point. A $7,500 tax credit gets down to twenty five grand. Oh, that's In high. Oregon, there's now then, on top of that, a $1,500 tax credit. Now you're talking twenty two five. Nah, okay? that's nothing. My lease on this is $350 a month. I save that much in gas. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. really the extra cost is the electricity I paid for. So really you're not paying for a vehicle, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> essentially all I'm paying for is the gas because I already... But if somebody already had a car where they had a lease, then they're going to save a ton of money.
So the, you know, the closest one, these are two, the ones that look like a, an outlet like that, that's 220 volts, would take about six hours to fully charge. Mm -hmm. uh, then you got quick chargers that take about 20 minutes, and there's a couple of them in downtown Portland. That's one way I can access them, or I can also go, give me a destination, the nearby charging station is closest to me here, and it'll put them in order of how far they are away mileage and tell me if they're a 110 or 220 or, or quick cool. charge or free awesome. outlet. Um, and then you can also um, tap into um, the um, to Nissan's information center and find out how many eco trees I've used. Um, and the eco trees are basically the offset of it's the, because I haven't emitted the carbon. That's the trees that I've saved that oh, wow. um, have, it would have had to produce oxygen to offset that. And there's a little diagram or thing up here that actually builds eco trees um, and kind of tells you uh, where you're at on the eco trees. Um, so eco trees are kind of units that you've used up. Yeah, like, and then this will actually okay. give you a, a, a tell you how much you uh, the world population is. On August 29, you accumulated 0 0.8 eco trees. It gives you the world population now of uh, leaves on leaves and what they've avoided in As of September 24th, 1,710,000 eco trees have been accumulated and 4,940 tons of carbon dioxide from tailpipe oh, emissions you. You make money, have been I'll avoided by the that. world okay, population of Nice. Hey folks, it's the Nissan Leaf. Change in the future after government discounts for buying a sustainable energy vehicle and local discount of uh, $1,500 to the state. Get these things for $22,500 roughly. Real simple way of shifting neutral, drive, and reverse. All right. Pass. <laughs> Okay. So that does that when you brake. Uh, or I'm sorry, they got trucks. Um, and they're Smith electric trucks. They go 100 miles on an electric charge. Frito Lay's got four of them here in Portland. They've got 30 of them they'll have in, installed by um, uh, year end. Uh, I worked for Frito Lay for 10 years. Okay. Uh, before I became a financial advisor. Um, yeah, I had seen on, on uh, one of your, you have a paper in the back of the truck area there that's showing some designs for yep. semi They're not ones. designs. Those are those are actual vehicles that are operational. And that they're using these, huh? Yep. Um, so FedEx is using, uh, has ordered 400 of the Navistars, uh, which is the parent company for international truck. Yeah, I never could imagine that they, that they could actually use electric power because they're so, uh, oh. you think they need that diesel power, you know? Well, they're, they're more like delivery trucks. I mean, just... So the, the long haul trucks like the um, long haul trucks like a you know like a freightliner truck or a, what are we thinking? Of? But then, yeah, so anyone, any big anything that's hauling freight, you know, like the big rig that's going up over there. Um, what they're actually converting those to is natural gas. Uh, like uh, that's probably a UPS truck right there. Um, in fact, UPS is on board, and in Canada, Shell Shell Oil is now working on a, a project to um, provide natural gas across the Trans Canada Highway for long haul truck drivers. Um, huge investment opportunity for a company that makes a conversion has a conversion kit that will convert the diesel you know, tractor tractors. Uh, from diesel to natural gas. Very the company's called Westport, and they just announced about a week ago the whole thing in Canada. Uh, prior to that, the UPS had announced that they're going to be putting um, refueling stations between, um, uh, uh, not Reno, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Salt Lake City. Uh, apparently there's a lot of trucking that happens when you get down that corridor. So yeah, that'll be the conversion on big trucks, uh, but delivery trucks like you know, imagine a FedEx truck pulling up or a UPS that's delivering a package to you. Any of those that have a, you know go less than 100 miles in a day and are just basically doing you know routes around town, 
They work perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, I knew that on the big, you know, the ones that, the, the semi trucks that are going interstate, those be kind of difficult, I guess, unless you had interstate charging points for them. But well, in the, in the interstate, it'll be charged, but the, the electric motors don't work well for tractor trailer combinations right now. Yeah, they'd have to be in a, in a lot bigger. It'd scale. be a huge motor that you, <laughs> you'd have to put into the into the tractor. My guess is down the road somebody will put them, but like right now the I five corridor is by by the end of October they'll have the I five corridor oops um, charged up so that you can I'll be able to you can drive from Vancouver B C all the way down to southern Oregon by the end of October to be able to plug this in in every thirty miles. Nice. Um, and they'll eventually have the I-5, by this time next year, they'll have the I-5 corridor fully charged all the way from Vancouver, B.C. down to San Diego. Wow. So this is, in the next 10 years, we should have easy access to oh. all those charging points and probably be able to buy them anywhere, these electric next cars. Next year. Yeah. I mean, next year, you really have all the infrastructure you need. Ford has said by 2020, so in eight years, they expect 25% of their automobile sales to come from electric cars. Well, we Ford. Describe it. I, I see that being feasible. So Ford's got a Ford Focus they're coming out with um, later this year. I wonder if I can. I want to thank Stephen for his time. Once again, this is Mobile T reporting with JoeAnybody.com. Ladies and gentlemen, the new 2011 Nissan Leaf. Get yours soon. <laughs>